all right guys welcome to my channel and um, in this video um, yeah I'm going to show you and I'm going to let you know the true difference and how you I mean how you can differentiate um, perfectly between modus sponens and modus tollens so this is actually a program or a subject topic in uh, critical thinking okay a university course so I think it's going to help many people okay so because many people are finding it difficult to differentiate them because it's very intense but this I, I brought out some truly summary way of you know getting to know it better and more okay <clears throat> sorry so let's begin okay so the difference between modus ponens and modus tollens okay yeah so when we talk about modus ponens it's mainly affirming the antecedent okay it's mainly affirming the antecedent and when we talk about the antecedent over here Antecedent simply means the subject okay, of the sentence. Okay? You might have a sentence like an example, it may be Kofi is going to school. Okay? In this case, Kofi here is the subject. So therefore, Kofi is the antecedent over here. So just related to what the subject of the sentence. Okay? And in critical thinking to subject sometimes might be called definiendum. Okay? Yeah. And the predicate may be called definience. Okay? <coughs> yeah. So in modus ponens, we affirm what the antecedent, which is the subject over here, okay? Yeah, so just put in mind that it's the subject that we are affirming. But then, in modus ponens, how to put in mind also that's what, it's what, antecedent. Okay, so you can answer questions excellently and you get your A out of it. Okay, so here, that's why I highlighted it here. The modus ponens will affirm the antecedent, okay? Yeah, so there's the summary I brought about. The all B's are C's, okay. That means this specifically B is what the subject over here. Then this C over here is what the consequence, okay. When we talk about the consequence, it means the predicate, okay, or the rest of the sentence. Yeah, that's what I mean by it. And also this place, it says it what this is B, okay. That means the B here is referring to what the subject over here, okay. That's how you put it in mind. The last one is so this is C. The C here means for the consequence. Alright. So you can know that this place, the first one says what? All B's are C's. The second one is what? This is B. Please pay critical attention, okay? And the third one is so this is C. So you can know that in modus ponens and in modus tollens, it is only the minor premise that determines the sentence or the argument is what either modus ponens or modus tollens. So in this case, you could see that <coughs> always the first one, okay, the first one, the first sentence is what the major premise, and the second one is the minor premise, and the last one is the conclusion. So what I mean here is that. It's only the minor premise that determines whether the argument is either modus ponens or modus tollens. So this one determines it. The second premise it determines everything over here. Okay, that's what you can use to know that whether the sentence or the argument is what modus ponens or modus tollens. So here you see that it's affirming the antecedent over here. It said this is B. It didn't say this is C. If the statement should have been this is C, that means we are affirming what the consequence over here. Okay, but in this case, it says what this is b that means we are affirming what the antecedents and not the consequence so we are affirming what the antecedent that is b with the subject of the sentence that's why i explained further okay so this is what b is affirming the antecedents and the last one is conclusion so this is c so this is an example we we'll, we'll use example to get more further idea it says all mammals are fair so in this case let's relate this one to this okay so all mammals here all mammals here is what B and then fair here have fair let's look here have fair over here is what C which is the consequence over here the results that comes out from the sentence okay <clears throat> that's what it means is the results that comes out from the sentence so all mammals are fair the same as well. all bees are C so all bees here the bees over here simply means what the mammals the C C here simply means what have fair Second one, I said it's only the minor premise that determines what I a sentence or the argument is modus ponens or modus tollens. So here, this is B. Specifically, is this. This animal is a mammal. When I say this animal is a mammal, that means that this animal over here is a mammal. Simply meaning this is B. That means this animal is what? A mammal. So a mammal is what? The B over here. 
so all this place this animal is he is specifically this here are the, the thing is. so you are just relating it okay specifically this and this animal is the same as what this because we are just applying the summary form to the example over here okay so a mammal over here is what the antecedent so you see that this sentence is what affirming the antecedent and not the consequence over here the consequence is what affair and i say when you when you see the minor premise affirming the antecedent that means it's what buddhist pronoun so over here is what affirming the antecedent that is this mammal this sorry this animal is a mammal that means what we are affirming the word antecedent is a mammal when we say affirming something that means we are deeming the fact that the thing is specifically so okay that's what we mean over here okay so it's, it proves the premises to be true okay yeah so this animal is a mammal okay and it's, it's true when we say all animals are fair as far as this animal is a mammal so it has fair of course animal the first one says all mammals are fair and they didn't mention an animal over here so it can maybe a dog so when we say this animal is a mammal the last one says the conclusion says so it has fair of course because the first one says all mammals are fair and we say this animal is a mammal that means the animal also has what fair then it's a mammal that's what it means over here so we always use what so you don't worry about the whole thing just only look at the minor premise to determine it which is this animal is a mammal okay so we are affirming the antecedent over here that means it's what modus ponens let's go to the next one in modus tollens you can see that it, it denies what the consequence it always denies the consequence that's what it means over here the modus tollens denies the consequence so you can see over here i wrote this one here all bees are c it's also a summary form the second one is this is not C, and the third one is what? It is not B. Okay, so this one is antecedent. This is the consequence. So this place is this what? This is not C. That means what? We are denying what? The consequence exactly. We're denying the consequence over here. It did not say this is not B. If it was, if it had been this is not B, that means it would be a fallacy because we don't deny antecedent. When we deny antecedent, that means it's a fallacy of denying the antecedent. And in the same way. If we ask, if we affirm consequence, that means it's what fallacy of affirming consequence. It's that and it's not done that way. I'll I'll assign go so we'll move also into that video so that you understand fallacy. So we're moving in our next topic. We're moving to that side as well. with the fallacy? Okay. So in this in this one, we are dealing with the modus and the modus ponens from the fallacy. So this is not silver here. Simply means what we are denying what the consequence. Not not over here. Simply means universal negation. Okay. We deny something we we disapprove something of being the fact that a thing is so okay yeah the last one is conclusion for so it does not what be exactly it's not be an example is over here all mammals are fair okay the major premise then this animal does not have fair is the minor premise so the religion says what so it is not a mammal specifically it's true if all mammals are fair and this animal does not have fair that means it's not a mama because they said all mamas are fair. Okay, so sometimes the, the argument sounds the argument is so good. Okay, we've been and also moving to some aspect of um validity and also soundness. Okay, when we talk about the soundness, that means the actual thing is true in reality. But when we talk about the validity, we, we just give an assumption of it's true in nature. Okay, we will also move into that one, but not, not, not now. I won't confuse you with that. So this one is what this animal is does not have fair that means that we are denying what the consequence over here so that's what it means so only always you look at the minor premise not the major the major is the first premise for the and the second one is what the minor premise then the last one is what the conclusion okay so the first one is always the major premise the second premise is always the minor premise and the last one is what the conclusion so a quick recap modus ponens we are from the antecedent which always you watch the minor premise and the modus students deny the consequence is always you were the minor premise. Thank you all and see you in my next video.